I really think that the certification course has helped me to like have the confidence to actually start the business with the business and setting up there. It's like, all right, well, I know I need to do this. I think I need to do this. I know I need that, but like, I'm not sure. So then because, you know, Nicole had really easily ABC, you know, it's like, all right, cool. Sweet, I feel good about this. I mean, my name is Richard McLaughlin. Uh, my business name is Goodland Farms, and I'm located in Southeast Pennsylvania, um, zone 7A or B, depending on who you ask. So my specialty is a combination of trying to just take gardening, you know, gardeneries principles, and apply that to more broadly uh, the idea of permaculture and uh, food forests. And so basically trying to take any sort of plantable space and turn it into either vegetable production or, you know, something more like a uh, food forest. So. A food forest contains either seven or nine layers, depending on you know how you want to look at it. But if we just kind of from a simple simplicity perspective, the seven layers of a food forest, you start with your canopy trees. So those are your very tall, you know, high, you know, shade providing trees. Then you have your dwarf kind of fruit trees, that mid-sized story. So that's your two layers. And then from there you have kind of your shrubs, so more of your bushes and things like that. Um, so that's three. The fourth is kind of your more herbate. So those are your more woody plants, right? You think of trees are kind of more woods and shrubs, you know, tough. And so the fourth is going to be your herbaceous perennials. Um, and so they're going to be more of your just kind of, you know, plants that aren't the wood, right? Like, so the, the softer type stuff. Um, so that's four. Um, then you have vines to grow up all of the trees. Uh, it's five. And then you have root crops and cover crops. So be like onions and carrots can be your root crops. And then cover crops could be anything like, you know, the lettuce and clover and all these different kinds. So really just intelligently designing a food forest so that way each of those layers contains some sort of productive element. I guess similar but different um, is actually cybersecurity consulting. So I've been consulting for the past six years. Ever since I graduated from college, I've been working in a professional services firm doing cybersecurity consulting. So helping very large companies, you know, solve different IT and cybersecurity issues and stay in compliance with, you know, different rules and regulations. So, so what made me make the decision to become a consultant, I would say just kind of my experience doing cybersecurity consulting, it felt like a natural transition, um, you know, just working with clients and helping them solve their problems instead of solving, you know, IT and cybersecurity problems. I would just be solving, you know, food and, you know, gardening problems, right? Pest problems and things like that. So it just seemed a lot more, um, it seemed like a natural transition, but to a much more interesting and I think rewarding, you know, career. I mean, cybersecurity is very, you know, can be very rewarding and, you know, it's super, I guess, cool and, you know, so, you know, helpful and important, but growing your own food just to me felt like it had more of an impact, at least on an individual level. In full transparency, it's still pretty similar because I'm still working my full-time job. So I'm still doing, you know, the cybersecurity consulting with just, you know, the garden on the side. But I would say, you know, from, you know, the consulting, the gardening perspective, you know, I've definitely started to meet more people in my local community, you know, just get, you know, come to events like these, you know, they're pretty unique, um, you know, experiences like that. Um, and yeah, so I guess just kind of being able to take advantage of opportunities that otherwise wouldn't be able to be present to me at the time. But other than that, you know, I'd say I'm still very early on in my business. And so my biggest win, I would say, would just be my first like consultation, like, or, you know, client. Um, I've partnered with somebody who lives actually very close. It's uh, really nice, it's convenient, like a five, not even five minute drive. Um, and she wants to do like a wildflower area. And then she also wants to have like a privacy kind of section in between her and her neighbors. And then she wants to work around on other borders of her house. House. But it's just the point being, and we're all doing it all in phases, not all at once, but it's just really cool to actually see because I remember during my first conversation with her, I was like kind of talking to her, I'm like, hey, like, I don't really like what's your budget, you know, and I don't really know kind of what this is going to cost. And we kind of think that she's like, I don't know, like between three and five. And I thought she was going to say hundred, but then she said thousand. And I was just like, I tried not to like smile too much. I mean, I know three and five is probably nothing compared to what some of the people here are doing, um, but I was like, holy crap like that's you know that's awesome like this person's like willing to potentially spend three to five thousand on just the wildflower bed for like me and they barely know me like that's so that was probably like one of the coolest moments was just being able to do that and then also this i mean this is pretty sweet just to come down here to nashville it's a cool city and just meet other people who and talk like i don't know i've never had anybody well i shouldn't say never but it's been a while since i've had somebody ask me like can you explain a food forest and so it's just nice to be able to like talk to people who kind of get it how has the gardenary certification program helped me with building my business i think it's been very, very, very important because the reason why I signed up for the gardenary business was not, or the gardenary certification was not so much for the gardening knowledge. I kind of had gotten that from other avenues um, from when I learned about it, but it was more so like, how do I start a business? Like, how do I start this business? And so from that, I mean, from it's been invaluable from all the perspectives, but from specifically the business perspective, like that's been 
huge. Like that's been, you know, okay, to have a bank account, you know, have all these different things, make sure you have insurance, like a step-by-step. And Nicole does a very, very good job of like distilling, like, you know, very kind of complex topics, I think, into very, you know, simple, you know, messaging. I mean, the fact that you can take like, you know, some of these finances and do them like a 10 minute video, right? Like that's pretty impressive. I don't feel like a lot of people could do that. So I really think that the certification course has helped me to like, have the confidence to actually start the business, I would say definitely join it. Like if you are serious about gardening and want to do something with it, you know, then do it. I would definitely highly recommend signing up for the program because it's just, to me, like I said, you know, previously it really helped me figure out what are these things that I need to do. You know, I'm like, it kind of like, you know, working out, like it's like, I'm terrible coming out with my exercises or somebody gave me a list of things to do and so when you go do it, it's like, okay, well that's easy, right? And so it's the same thing with the business and setting up there. It's like, all right, well, I know I need to do this. I think I need to do this. I know I need that, but like, I'm not sure. So then because, you know, Nicole had really easily ABC, you know, it's like, all right, cool. Sweet, I feel good about this. I mean, I still need to get some insurance and do some things like that, so I'm not fully done. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know been really, really helpful. So highly, highly recommend it if you want to do any sort of gardening business. So why should somebody me, hire me as a garden consultant? Um, just my background and unique experience in a totally different field, but you know, the fact that it still is consulting, like I have a very, you know, I'm, I'm able to kind of have conversations, and, you know, with and figure out what somebody's needs are and then how, you know, best to address those needs. So I think kind of the transition is easy from that perspective, but then also like one of the reasons why, so I mentioned cybersecurity before, I mean, a bunch, but like certifications are big in cybersecurity, right? And so I kind of took that and was like, all right, well, I'm gonna then certify myself, you know, in gardening, right? And then so that way, you know, if people look at me, they're like, okay, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. He's not just some random dude who like says he likes to garden, right? So I have um, a permaculture research certification as well. So I'm very familiar with permaculture and the various concepts. That's actually how I learned about the food forest. I think that I have a unique, I mean, everybody here has unique knowledge, right? You know, we're all, you know, and so, you know, everyone has those you know something to provide there but i think just from the permaculture aspect and then just some of my other gardening knowledge and experience as well as this you know the consulting side of the house permaculture i guess stands for like permanent culture it's just this idea that like we as human beings like we need to live somewhere we need to eat things we need to sleep like you know we have like these four f physiological basic needs right everybody needs that but then why do we still have so much so many problems and so much trouble like providing that it's interesting because like there's like the like one of the last chapters in the certification course is basically talking about like you know legal structures of bioregional communities and things like that to where it's like so it's like not even like gardening it's kind of talking about like how can we kind of like structure things so that way like we're more efficient you know we can provide more locally grown food and nutrient dense food to people who need it right and things like that so i guess to go back to the question of why permaculture it just seemed like it was this all-encompassing you know concept that focused on some really key and basic needs that you know regardless of what you believe in or you know what religion race gender orientation whatever like you can't really argue that you know everybody needs somewhere nice to sleep you know everybody needs some kind of food and you know water and things like that and so to me it just kind of was like well how can you really argue with that i think that more people need to do things that are a net positive rather than a net negative you can find me on you know various different social medias at goodland farms llc